Lenny's got Lee by three on the boards. Even their assist to turnover ratio is close. Head coach Lisa Fortier told us the twins cover for each other. So when one's at an eight, the other's at a two. And the Bulldogs are hoping to see these twin powers activate and bring strength in numbers. Because as you said, CP, this Gonzaga squad is the best three-point shooting team in the country. Yeah, get this. Gonzaga as a team shoots a better percentage than Caitlin Clark does. And she's phenomenal. Well, they got three players that shoot over 40%. So when you look at what you've got to defend when you're facing Gonzaga, is you've got to run them off that three-point line. Well, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. They're brought to you by Capital One. Need to know Madison Booker, the Big 12 Player of the Year, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. December 27th is when Roy Harmon went down after tearing her ACL in a shoot-around, and they looked to Madison Booker, who was a has been playing at the University of Texas for four seasons, and I was looking back at her numbers. She started out her freshman year only playing seven minutes a game. That's grown for, to 16, sophomore, 25, junior, to 32 minutes a game this season. 10-0 run for Texas. Well, going back to the point guard position, Roy Harmon does so much, and she's still so involved. You see her in this huddle in the last timeout, right behind Madison Booker. That's where you will always find her. She's like a second set of eyes and ears and a sounding board for Madison as she's trying to learn and take over this point guard role. Well, and she said she knows from being a point guard, a lot of times you have a lot of people delivering the message to you, and at times she doesn't have to say anything. She just helps. Madison, when she needs it, she's got questions or she needs encouragement or an explanation. But sometimes it's just there. Her presence is support of Booker. Rebound by Shea Holly. Another chance for Texas here. That's what I love. That mid-range game that Madison Booker has. That one didn't go, but more times than not, they do. Talking to Roy Harmon today at shoot-around, she said, look, if anybody knows what it's like to come in as a freshman and play point guard for Vic Schaefer, she goes, I do. Yeah. I know exactly what it feels like, <laughs> and I know how hard it is. But she said it's not just what she gives to Madison. She looks at it as Madison gives something to her. Because she's not able to be on the floor, she said, I can learn from if Madison does something well or she doesn't do something as good as she needs to or makes mistakes, that's still a learning opportunity for Rory Harmon. Well, Madison Booker will take a seat with two free throws as Yvonne Ejim is at the free throw line. And Brooke, Rory Harmon has kind of turned into Coach Harmon on the sidelines. That's right. She's already got the notebook in hand. So one of her big duties is to chart kills, which equates to three defensive stops in a row. We all know how much Vic Schaefer loves the defense. So you know, for Rory to kind of take on that coaching role, she's got to be more engaged and in a different way and kind of be in that supportive teammate role there on the sidelines. Yeah, this is the notebook that the GAs got for Rory after she went down with that injury. She immediately became Coach Harmon. You see her coaching on the floor, on the sidelines. Can you imagine next season when both Roy Harmon and Madison Booker can Watch be on? Watch out. Woo. We get to see that for, what, about 12 games this year? Yeah, and that was just a taste of what's to come. Now also having a healthy Aaliyah Moore, number 23, back on the floor as well. That's the energy for the Longhorns. Right now, Shaylee Gonzalez is having to take over at that point position because Madison Booker has two fouls. No field goals for Gonzaga in the last four minutes, and there's an offensive foul on Trong. On Kaylee Trong, her second. Aaliyah Moore took that charge. She has 20, now 27 drawn charges on the season. It's the most on Texas's team. Oh, and Che Holly's pass sails. She was trying to get it over to Jacqueline Wynn and Tonda.
Vic Schaefer talked about how proud he is of this team. He said, bet you all of y'all probably counted us out when Roy Har Harmon went down, but how this team is pulled together, and they're so scrappy. Everybody he puts on the floor, but I don't think you have a choice. To play for Vic Schaefer, you've got to be ready to get after it. And Texas with its first number one seed since 2004. He actually smiled in our meetings yesterday. You know, he usually has <laughs> He's a very serious usually. Gray cloud over him. <laughs> he was happy yesterday. He loves this team. And the thing that he loves about this team is they come to go to work. He said the only thing really he has to worry about is as long as they know where the bus is and what time it's leaving, they come and bring their work pal every day. Especially defensively, they're doing a good job right now as Gonzaga hasn't had a field goal in five minutes. That's going to be the first foul against Deanna Gaston. Texas in a bit of a scoring drought, too. No points for the Longhorns in the last three minutes. Shot clock still on. Gonzalez has taken over at the point with Booker on the bench. Two fouls. And Aaliyah Moore just takes it to the rack. It's where you go if you're Texas and you need a bucket because she can get downhill and she's strong enough to finish through contact. Agent trying to go a little high-low there with Hollingsworth. And Yvonne Egypt, who's their leading scorer and rebounder, does not have a field goal yet. Four points, but all from the free throw line. Three seconds, Gaston. High arcing shot. Texas will take it. They end the quarter on a 14 to two run. When we come back, we'll catch up with Lisa Fortier, Gonzaga's head coach. They trail after 10 minutes. On. Ladies, thank you. Yeah, Gonzaga, just 18% from the field. Had it held to a season low in the first quarter of nine points. They've only made three field goals in this game. They've turned the ball over eight times. Gonzaga likes to move and pass the basketball, but when you're playing a good defensive team, You've got to take the best option that's there. Now, it doesn't mean that you've got to get sped up or take up quick shots, but sometimes, like coming off ball screens, Gonzaga is attacking the hedge, where if they just kept the dribble one more second after the post recovered, they would have drives to the basket. Texas has got to get this shot up. And that's going to be an offensive foul against Shea Holly. That's her second. Gonzaga went over nine minutes without a field goal. And this will be Texas basketball. What's the Texas huddle been like, Brooke? Coach Schaefer really upset about the fouls. He said, we've got to stop fouling their post players. As you know, right now, with five, they put them on the line every single time. And then Blair Schaefer said, look, offensively, we got to start moving the ball. Everybody's holding on to it for four, five seconds. And CP, you talking about the screens. When I'm seeing two from Gonzaga, they're not holding the screens long enough. A lot of Texas players are too strong. They're kind of pushing them out of position. Well, and the thing that I'm seeing, Brooke, is on those ball screens, the post defense from Texas is kind of just kind of fake. It's kind of a, what do you call it, a, a dummy defense. Yeah. Because it's not really to stop anything. It's just kind of pick a boo one there and then gone. And if Gonzaga's guards would keep the ball, they'd be able to turn the corner. Well, Ivana Ejim just picked up her third foul. She was put back in the game with those two and now has three, the Conference Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year and an AP All-American. 
I just, I, I hate that. I mean, we saw Cameron Brink go out in foul trouble. Kiki Arioffen didn't get to play very much in that first game because of foul trouble. And Madison Booker on the bench for Texas most of this first half due to foul trouble. Both these streams trying to overcome that so they can make it to the Elite Eight. NC State is already there. They're awaiting the winner of this game. Left short by Brenna Maxwell. She's their leading three-point shooter. Gonzaga just two of eight from behind the three-point line. And Texas up here in the second quarter in the Sweet 16 in Portland. Maxwell predetermined she was going to take the shot instead of reading the roller of the offense. When a team is, is pressuring you, you gotta take a deep breath and slow down and read the options instead of predetermining, because if you predetermine your actions, you're falling right into the hands of what the defense wants you to do. Zag shooting just 15% from the field. Shaley Gonzalez has had to run the point the most of this first half because Madison Booker in foul trouble. Amina Muhammad looking for help. And there's going to be an offensive foul against Aliyah Moore. Her first. Now you can't, you cannot take too long to give the post player the basketball. They're fighting for positioning. The defense is pushing back, and when you retaliate, you're putting your, you're putting your big girl in trouble down low. See another ball screen action. Aaliyah Moore was ready to help. Kaylin Trong working here. Okay, so now you have a mismatch because the post is out on Trong, but they can't find Hollingsworth down low. The kick out to awaiting Esther Little, and she misses. The best three-point shooting team in the nation, two for nine tonight. by Shea Holly. Priscilla Mall, the turnaround in the lane. Rebound by Abo, and one opportunity. <laughs> Liam Moore battling down low to get offensive positioning, and then this is what she does best, gets the and one, the emotion to get her team fired up. Well, so much emotion for Aaliyah Moore. She told us, looking back a year ago, I had to watch our team lose in the second round from the bench because I was coming back from that knee injury. I couldn't help them. She goes, what a difference a year makes. She has 100% confidence in that knee. She's helping Texas try to get back to the Elite Eight. She just she talked about the appreciation for the opportunity to be back. And, and that's when you can tell that a player really loves the game when she shows how happy she is to be on the floor. Shea Hawley told us she's noticed a difference in Aaliyah Moore's motor, too. She said she is high energy, go, 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 all the time now. I love the passion that she plays with. Number 23 in white. A oh, great switching action by Texas. It's going to be a foul against Mina Muhammad, her second. A 
Coach Schaefer got his arms wrapped up. He's frustrated with his team as many fouls as they've committed. He still has the jacket on, though. That is a great point. I'm surprised. You, sometimes it comes off after the opening tip-off. It is a little chilly in here. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Aaliyah Moore has Texas's last five points in this game as we approach a minute until the half. See, that's where you, you get the ball to the post quickly. Then good things can happen. She found her teammate, Amina Muhammad. Meanwhile, no field goals for Gonzaga in almost six minutes. Texas's defense has been stifling. <laughs> Offensive foul on Kalen Strong as Shaylee Gonzalez steps up to take the charge. Vic Schaefer does such a terrific job of situations. So he's going to use this full clock to get the shot. And I would say would get it back to Shea Holly or get it to Aaliyah Moore. About a two second, second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Shea Holly in the corner, swish! The lifetime Longhorn with a big bucket right before the half for Texas. And the Longhorns end it on a 10-2 run. It is a first half low, 18 points for the Zags this season. They usually shoot 49% from the field, eighth in the nation tonight, just 14%. Aaliyah Moore is standing by with Brooke. Aaliyah. A sense of urgency from you and your team with Madison Booker out with two fouls. Give us a sense of how that feels for you. I mean, we work out in and practice every day, um, putting Maddie in situations where she's not on the floor. So everyone else has to step up. And I think we've done a great job of doing that. I mean, we have to take care of the ball. Coach Schaefer said that. Under 10 turnovers, and we always have a chance to win the game if we can do that. It's the number one three-point shooting team in the country. You hold them to 18 points in the first half. Why is your defense so good? Man, again, we work, we've been working on this since last summer. But no, we've been really locked in. Our help side defense is great. We just have to make sure that we rebound, and myself included. But if we do that, we'll be fine. All right, Aaliyah, thank you. Thank you. Texas, you know Texas, they're always working on their defense. <laughs> it's paying off. the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Shea Hawley leading the Longhorns offensively in that first half. Ten points, she was four of five from the field, including a couple of three-pointers in Texas with a nice lead heading into the third quarter, seeking to get back to the Elite Eight. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Brooke Weisbrod with you. Texas, their movement on both ends of the floor is so fluid, especially offensively sharing the basketball. Well, and moving without the ball, not just standing and watching. They have nine assists. Well, that happens when, when you don't have the ball, you don't stand, but you find the opportunities to find the options to being able to score. And Texas did that so well with their dribble drive offense, the screening for each other, reading the screens, using the screens, and then not only just cutting, but cutting hard. That gives you time to get your shot off, and that worked out well. That's why Texas will shoot 52% in that first half. Let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Texas hit four three-pointers. Gonzaga had a total of three field goals in that first half. Their lowest first half total of the season, just 14% from the field, only 18 points, and 10 of those coming from the free throw line. And Gonzaga wasn't able to get stops in transition, really, and that's where they can be really dangerous. Ejim running in transition, and then that got quick three-point shot. 
Yeah, Gonzaga is the best three-point shooting team in the nation, but tonight they have struggled just 22%. Now 20%, two for 10 from the three-point line. Well, Texas did their damage with Madison Booker only playing eight minutes. Well, she picked up two early fouls. Madison Booker had a takeover at the point guard position for Rory Harmon when she was injured on December 27th. Well, Shaley Gonzalez took over in the first half today with Booker settled with those fouls. Kaylin Trong driving in. Gonzaga will get a second opportunity to kick back out to Kaylee Trong. Look how far out Gonzaga's catching the ball to start their offense. Some great defense by Shea Hawley to stop that. Texas trying to go to its 12th Elite Eight appearance. It would be the third under Vic Schaefer. Gonzaga has only been there one time. It was back in 2011. Gonzaga won for its last 19. The offense that has been its strength has really struggled tonight. And then the turnover. Let's go back to that defensive stop from Shea Holly. Just one on one defense. And I like the verticality. She got, I think you got to give her credit for the block right there. Shea Holly, the Austin, Texas native. That burnt orange is in her blood. Bucket underneath Deanna Gaston, fed by Aaliyah Moore. Well, Holly plays, Shea Holly plays like she does bleed the rust orange because she never gets, she never seems to get tired. She told us sometimes she's hiding the fact, but she just never stops with the energy. And Eliza Hollingsworth underneath the bucket. And Holly lost control of it. It'll be a Texas turnover. Ten turnovers apiece for each team. And that's a blocking foul on Moore, and she is still down right now for Texas. It'll be her second as her teammates help her up. Tore ACL last December, back in 2022. I'm glad to see her get back up. This is Kaylee Trong at the free throw line. Leah Moore gave a little wiggle like, okay, let me get everything back lined up. I'm good to yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> you know she doesn't want to come out of this game. No. She is slow to get back up the court, though. Now, how do you slow down the dribble drive of Texas? Well, you've got to keep the ball on one side of the floor. Leah Moore back on the floor on the other side and the bucket there from Brenna Maxwell. Leah Moore trying to walk it off, but you can tell she's in some discomfort. It's back-to-back -back play. She's found herself on the hardwood. And they are going to sub for her. Amina Muhammad will come in and give Amo a break. Oh, you don't want
want to pick up your dribble there. Not that close to the half court line. Turnover. Jalen Gonzalez almost got it back. Kaylee Trong. Gaston turnaround is short. Brooke, how's Aaliyah Moore doing on the Texas bench? You know, I tell you, she just got very quick treatment. And by quick, I mean she touched the back area of kind of her left hip, left back. The trainer gave it a couple squeezes. She walked right away and sat on the bench. That's one tough young woman over there. <laughs> she said, said, I got this. She said, just put some dirt on it. <laughs> <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. No, no, that's right. A little more life has come to the Zags. Brenna Maxwell, just the third three-pointer today for Gonzaga, who averages almost 10 threes a game. A 7-0 run. And a travel on Madison Booker. First, a confidence. Zags have got life. They can get another stop. They can cut this thing into single digits. Gonzalez showing all her range. Free throw line, the three-point line, whatever Texas needs. She's got 13. Third foul against Amina Muhammad of Texas. But Shaylee Gonzalez, 13 points to lead the Longhorns right now, including three threes. Well, the Zags are trying to make a run, but it's Gonzalez that is so quick with the trigger. She brought that from DePaul. Well, Gonzaga royalty in the house, Courtney Vandersloot, who was the Naismith Award winner, three-time conference player of the year. She helped Gonzaga make history back in 2011, their only time getting to the Elite Eight. Now, they lost to Stanford in that game. She had 25 points, but Gonzaga trying to make it now to Elite Eight so they can come back and win this game. It'd be the first since that 2011 run. One of the best point guards to play in the history of Gonzaga basketball, and I love the uniforms. Yeah, she could Huge. fit three Vandersloots in one yes. uniform. <laughs> Gonzaga was held to a season low 18 points in the first half of this game, but their offense looking better in this third quarter. How have they changed it? Well, they've picked up the intensity defensively. And then they've sped up offensively, taking quicker shots, getting good shots, good looks, and their cuts seem to be much more crisp. These Ags have hit their last three shots. Kaylin Trog looking for some space over to Hybens. Liam Moore is back on the floor. I'd go at her off the bounce. Strong will, but lost the basketball, and there's going to be a kick ball. One of the biggest differences for Gonzaga is, okay, first you feel the pressure of Texas in the first half. Now in the second half, they're used to it. They know what to expect. around all three sides of the floor, too. That's something we didn't see much in the first half. Swatted away by Madison Booker underneath, up ahead to Gonzalez. Inside to Moore.
Moore's hurt. And she's still down on the floor on the other end for Texas. Shaley Gonzalez dives in the passing lane. We're trying to get up with some help. Mm, she immediately got, grabbed the back of her leg. The same one with the brace on it. You guys, I'm actually right in front uh, or behind Texas's bench, and when she went down, she grabbed the back of her leg and just said, I'm cramping, I'm cramping, and then just saw a Texas representative from their staff say the same thing. So let's hope that's all it is. Yes, yeah, so they're taking a look at her just off to the side near the Texas bench. Zags were able to make a run when Aaliyah Moore was off the floor. Gonzalez a little floater. 15 points and a 6-0 run for Texas. As Shaylee Gonzalez, the transfer from BYU, making a difference for Texas here. Shooting 60% from the field. And you see Vic Schaefer Pumping his fist. He likes that defensive effort from the Longhorns. Still wearing the jacket in the third quarter. Okay, he's got about a minute and a half. I'm saying in that fourth <laughs> quarter, it may come off. He's trying to get this team to the Elite Eight. He's done it two other times in his previous three seasons at Texas. That one hops out for Muhammad. You know, we got the chance yesterday to talk to Shea Holly. As Madison Booker whistled for her third foul. And Shea Holly, a player that came in as a freshman, that was Coach Schaefer's first year at Texas. And she said, I've seen him change a lot. He trusts this team more. It's his players. He's set the expectation. There's a standard now that's his standard at Texas. And he's given them a little bit more freedom to, hey, if I tell you you got to be here at this time, you're, at the, you're there at this time. Because he sees how hard they play, and Shea Holly is one that sets that example. Number 10 in white. And she talks about seeing the alumni, they come to practice, the banners that are hanging in their new arena. It's the third against Hybens. Five points now for Amina Muhammad. Make it six. Well, guys, Aaliyah Moore was over here continuing to stretch, the training staff working on her, and she took a hot shot, which is an anti-cramping liquid, and it definitely didn't taste good because it took her a few gulps to get that down, but <laughs> look how much it brought her back to life. She's up cheering off the bench a minute, one second to go in the third quarter, and Texas up looking towards the Elite Eight from the field. Texas, a total team effort, too. They had to do it. In this game, a lot of the game without Madison Booker on the floor due to foul, due to foul trouble. Not having a Madison Booker or at times a Liam Moore, their energy and the reserves for the Longhorns came in. They were huge for Vic Schaefer tonight. So four teams have made their way to the Elite Eight on Sunday in Albany. We'll see South Carolina and Oregon State. Here in Portland on Sunday at 3 Eastern on ABC, Texas will battle NC State and we'll get set to send teams to the final four.